What are groups in Islam? How do they affect you? How should you deal with them? Back with the answers in just a minute. There is no man more dear to me Throughout the whole of history Than the one who was sent as a guide Leading people from darkness to light His message was simple and clear That there is one God who we must all fear Inviting people to His name is Muhammad Mustafa. His name is Muhammad Mustafa. Welcome back, viewers, to another episode uh, in our series, The Ark of Noah. Uh, in the very last episode, we were, we were really outlining the, uh, the history of, of the division within the Ummah. Um, and in this episode, we're going to look at it a little bit more focus um, towards the result of this division and where we stand today with relation to different groups. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh Mu'tasim. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Of course, joining us in the studio once again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for your efforts for coming. Um, Sheikh, uh, we outlined uh, in, in the uh, previous episode the, the origin uh, of, of these, uh, this division um, and obviously the groups that have appeared as a consequence. Um, now, who really are these groups? And, and can you just summarize where did they come from, the origins, just again for the viewers? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. The issue of the groups, or the groups as we said, started uh, breaking from the main body of the Muslims right after the death of Umar ibn Khattab. Mm. They started to become apparent, clear, one after the other was breaking from the body of the Muslims. First started the Khawarij, then the Rafidah, then came the Qadariyya, the people who disbelieved in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in Allah's knowledge of things before they happen. Uh, then groups followed to break from the main bodies of the uh, body of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Like afterwards there were, came Al-Mu'tazila, after the Mu'tazila came uh, Al-Kullabiyya al al and Maturidiyya and Al-Sha'ira and the different groups. Then came some Sufi sects as well that broke from the main body of the Ummah. Mm. Each one took one side of Islam and introduced some new things, mm. some new stuff to it. Mm. And some of that was done under uh, scholarship. Mm. Some of this was said to be a new development in Islamic mm. theology. You know, was that Mu'tazila? Was that something? Obviously, Mu'tazila, Ash'ara, Maturidiyya, mm. and different other groups as well. They they came from a mm. they approached Islam, claiming to be from a scholarly point of view, but uh, all of that was uh, an addition or human modification to the divine knowledge or the divine book, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they actually split from the understanding that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were upon. Subhanallah. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say uh, in the Qur'an? Let's start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. What does Allah say in the Qur'an uh, uh, warning uh, us about dividing and uh, division? Yes, actually this is, uh, this is probably the key point in what we are talking about, the mm. issue of division. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, warned this ummah against division in different verses. For example, Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيعًا and do not be from among the polytheists, those who have split among themselves in terms mm -hmm. of religion. And they turned into, or they, uh, they were divided into sects and groups. So it shows that the fact, or that the issue of division is detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's a very clear sign that people are not holding to the divine guidance. Because Allah says about the Qur'an, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If it were from other than Allah, they would have f found so many discrepancies, differences. Mm. So the fact that the ummah is split amongst itself, that there are divisions, there are groups, it shows that they are not upon one understanding. Mm. And uh, obviously, one has to be on the correct understanding, the rest obviously will not be mm. on the divine guidance. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against this. In different verses as well, a very serious verse in Surah uh, Al-An'am, Allah says, which, is, which was actually narrated, uh, mentioned also in a hadith, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud, mm. 
which was uh, where he, the Prophet وسلم, oh, he says, the Messenger وسلم, drew a line for us in the sand. Mm. And he said, this is the path leading to Allah. Oh, that's the Quran, that's yeah. the Sunnah, that's the understanding yeah. of the companions. Then he drew other lines that were not straight to its left and its right. And he said, these are other ways, other paths. At the uh, head or at the beginning of each road, there is a shaitan calling people to it, saying, this is the path. Yeah. Mm. Or we can say in our analogy, this is the Ark of Noah, come and mm. join us. Mm. But th- then the Prophet ﷺ recited the verse in Surah Al- in Surah Al- Al-An'am, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُولَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And this is my straight path, this is my path. Follow it and don't follow the other paths, because they will lead you astray from it. Mm-hmm. So uh, the verses are so many in the Qur'an that warn us against division, and Allah mentions that as a sign of the people who went astray. So when the people are destroyed, they differ. Why? Because they split from the correct mm-hmm. understanding which was sent to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, Shaykh, now I want to take you now uh, back to um, the idea of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Uh, we mentioned it in the previous episode just to give a little flavor of what's to come. Now, really, we want to... Can you make clear to the viewers how we define Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah? Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah are the people who held on to the same religion the Prophet ﷺ and his companions were upon. The reason why the, wo- the word Sunnah is used is that because there is no group that ascribes to Islam, uh, for example, outlaws the Qur'an. Mm. All of them ascribe to the Qur'an, they say it's the Book mm. of Allah. Because once they say that we have nothing to do with the Qur'an, they're out of Islam. Mm. But with the Sunnah, there are many groups, uh, for example, the Rafida. They don't believe in the Sunnah. Mm. They say the Sunnah was narrated by the companions, these w- the so-called companions, and these are non-Muslims. So we don't believe in that. So the reason why they are called Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah to show that they are still on the same way of the Prophet Sallallahu So they hold on to the Quran based on the Sunnah mm. of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the understanding of his companions. And by means of being on this way, they are united. SubhanAllah. Because, yeah, because each, any, if, you, if you check out any of the groups that we find you will find a human element or human elements mm. in it. Mm. It's, the, it's the outcome of human endeavor, of human uh, rationalism, of human ambition, of human uh, emotion. Mm. In place of the Some divine guidance. Yeah, yes. That's right. But with Ahlul mm. Sunnah wal Jama'ah, what they do, they have submission, total submission mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we yeah. find in the Quran and in the Sunnah that was practiced by the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, this is what we submit to, we hold on to that, and we don't rationalize with, th- with that. Mm. We don't, uh, for example, try to put these to the test. They don't make sense. For example, especially is- issues of aqidah, mm. like something about aqidah, about the unseen. They say, this doesn't make sense. Ahlul Sunnah don't do that. Mm. That's divine guidance, mm. part of the unseen. We believe yeah. in it, we accept it, yeah. we submit. No, that's very good. It puts very clearly the limits on, again, as the, the limits of the human understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the under one who understands everything and the human cannot. So when you apply that basic principle, things become very clear. Now, Sheikh, I want to ask you, uh, one of the things that perhaps <coughs> some of the viewers might be confused about is at what stage uh, do people leave Ahlul Sunnah Jama'a and uh, <coughs> what stage do we tolerate different groups inside Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'a? This is a very critical <coughs> question, and as, to be honest, it's very difficult to answer as well, mm. because uh, it could take quite a long time just explaining this. But generally speaking, uh, if a person <coughs> believes that we had to follow the Quran and follow the Sunnah, mm. according to the understanding that what was taught to the companions by the Prophet wasallam. <laughs> As long as they generally hold on to that and don't break from that practically, then these are Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Mm-hmm. That person is part of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. What happens is that some people say, we believe in the Quran and the Sunnah. But when it comes, for example, to the Quran, let's take the attributes of Allah. Allah says, for example, in the Quran, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. Allah, the merciful, rose above the throne. We believe as Ahlul Sunnah that this is a reality. Mm-hmm. That this is true. Mm. But we don't describe how. We don't know how. Mm. Because that's part of the unseen. Allah mm. told us that he rose above the throne. But we don't. he didn't tell us how. So we believe it's a reality. We don't try to imagine it. We don't try to figure that out. We believe in it. There are groups who say, well, if you say this, you have likened Allah to his creation. Mm. Because you are claiming that Allah sits as the creation said. 
we say we never said anything mm. about this. Mm. That's your false, that's your wrong understanding mm. that led you to this conclusion. So they disbelieve in the meaning of this verse. They don't say we disbelieve, but they say we don't think that this is the meaning of the verse. We think it's a figurative meaning. Mm. It's, a, uh, it's, it's a figure of speech. Mm. So they say it means Allah has assumed control over the world, over the universe. We say these people have deviated now from the correct understanding of the Qur'an mm. and from the hadith of the Prophet that support this very meaning that is very clear. So once they, once the people uh, don't hold on to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the companions, so they bring something new, mm. then they have pushed themselves outside the circle of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Okay, so what about if somebody, for example, um, typically you hear a lot about um, people believing that Allah is everywhere, um, uh, there's no real basis. Does this, w what would an issue like that, for example, would that, if they believed like that, would that push them outside Ahlul Sunnah Jama'at? Or would they still be inside Ahlul Sunnah Jama'at, but just with some incorrect understandings? Here we have to differentiate, because sometimes people uh, gr uh, grow up in an environment where they're not, they are not exposed to authentic knowledge. Mm. So sometimes uh, a notion is spread like, for example, that Allah is everywhere. Mm. So the person is not qualified, they don't have knowledge, mm. they're just one of the general public of the Muslims, general masses, and they happen to pick up this aqidah without really putting it to the test, mm. and it doesn't really impact their behavior or anything. Mm. Due to ignorance, we don't say these people are out outside Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, mm. as long as they generally mm. believe in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and they think this is the truth, mm. we still say that these people need to be educated, but we don't mm. expel them out outside of okay. the Qur'an. But as to the scholars, the people who believe in this mm. and they defend this and they bring the proofs and they play with the verses of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet mm. Sallam, trying to oh. prove that Allah is everywhere to these people. We obviously after we establish the truth and clarify to them and they refuse it, obviously they they just kick themselves outside the realm. So, of so, so it's a very important point here that uh, and, and I think this is very important in terms of uh, the unity of the Muslims yeah. is is there's there's a lot of ignorance amongst people in terms of their their religion yeah. um, uh, so the average person who's not a scholar he may have some s incorrect beliefs but he may not know that they're incorrect yes so therefore we've got to be careful yeah. when we go around saying this puts you outside and this pointing the finger uh, because that won't help the unity of the Muslims will it definitely it destroys the unity and it also destroys I mean it's a violation to the right of that person mm. uh, an average Muslim who has never really been exposed to Islamic teachings and uh, enough knowledge or in-depth knowledge about the Quran and the Sunnah and they just happen to pick up to pick this up from the environment from their parents or whatever we can't expel them outside of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah based on this okay Sheikh uh, we're gonna be right back uh, after the short break uh, stay with us, stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Philosophy of Islamic Law, a program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart, and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Um, we've been discussing with Sheikh Mutasim uh, the issue of groups. Um, and just before the break, we were mentioning, Sheikh, that uh, in fact, there's a very important point of knowing the definition and the limits of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, uh, and that that is concerned with the knowledge of a person and whether he, out of ignorance, believes something and he doesn't have in-depth knowledge with it, 
or whether he has in-depth knowledge and you tries to bring something to refute what is the, the, the true path. Yes, obviously, there's a difference between a person who, whose belief is based on a conscious effort of learning, teaching, and studying, and, mm -hmm. and they embrace these ideas that are contrary to the understanding of the Prophet so his yeah. sunnah, and the understanding of his companions, uh, and between a person who's actually just a layman, and uh, they happen to pick this up from the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why sometimes some of the young, younger brothers who come to the sunnah, they start to learn the truth and learn the correct aqidah. They go back to their parents, they question them, they mm -hmm. put them to the test, and they start, you are not from Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Yeah. Basically, once you find that a person, a layman, has a wrong understanding, you have to approach them the right way. Mm -hmm. Show them the evidence that, for example, let's take a, just a prac as a practical example, those who say, Allah is everywhere. Can I, can I just mention just here, yes. I'd just like to say, how important do you, do you think it is to understand your position when you do this? That you realize, Subhanallah, my for example, my father, he's on, he's believing in the wrong way, and you as a son have to assess the appropriateness of you going to your father, or should it be through another person or another way? Well, this is something you have to find out mm. for yourself because your knowledge of your father really determines where you're going to go, or how you're going to approach him, or approach your mother, for example. Uh, so if you feel that your father or your parent is likely to accept from you, please mm. go ahead mm. and do that. But if you feel that if it comes like from the local imam or if it comes from a friend through a friend, mm. it could be very, m or it's more, more likely for him mm. to accept, mm. then please do that. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, always try to find out the best way mm. to advise them, mm. present them with the proofs. And just to take as a case in point the issue of those who believe that Allah is everywhere, mm. we just say in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَمُرُ Are you, do you feel safe that the one who's above the heavens could destroy this, uh, the, the earth from beneath you or cause it to crack? And even in the Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, in the hadith of uh, Muawiyah al-Sulami, when he came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I slapped my slave girl and I want to free her. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ said, bring her. He asked her, uh, do you believe that uh, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. She said, yes. He asked her, who am I? She said, you are the messenger of Allah. He told her, oh, in one narration, he, the Prophet ﷺ asked her, where is Allah? She says, above the heavens. Oh. And she signed, or she gave mm. the sign like that. Mm. She pointed up upwards. So this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not within his creation. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is apart from his, his creation, totally separate from his creation. And Allah is above the universe, above the creation, above his throne, as he described himself in the Quran, as the Prophet ﷺ described in the Sunnah. Mm -hmm. So we, pre we present them with the evidence and we take it easy with them. Even if they mm -hmm. don't accept it at, at the first encounter, they could do that mm -hmm. later on. But don't, don't make it your business to label people. You are from Ahl Sunnah, no, you're no. not. Leave that to the scholars. Exactly. Yeah. And th that's a very important point, isn't it? Because the, the, the science of this and the actual... Um, ejection of, of certain groups from uh, the classification of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah cannot be done by a layman, can it? Thank you very much. This is exactly what we should do. And this causes, I mean, the, the, the lack of this understanding causes mm. so much division mm. in the Ummah. Mm. Now we leave it as, as a layman and even as a beginner student of knowledge, even as an intermediate student mm. of knowledge. Mm. Don't ever make it your business to start labeling people or mm. classifying where they belong or where their position is. Leave that for the scholar, make it your main concern to study the deen and advise the people around you, tell them the truth. Make, ma you know, make that your main concern. You know what happens with people, uh, because it's not our business to start judging people and uh, appointing places in hellfire or paradise for them. Oh. That's not our business. And it w this, this kind of act would destroy the unity of the Ummah. I'm not saying not to respond to the people of innovation, mm -hmm. not to clarify the mistakes of these people. Mm -hmm. This is the job of the strong students of knowledge and the scholars mm -hmm. and even beginner students of knowledge, they can speak in generalities mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. avoid conflict because they don't know how to deal with conflict. Oh, and if they are yeah. faced with some questions, they are unable to answer. Yeah. So they could cause uh, the general public so mm -hmm. much confusion. Mm -hmm. So they should avoid this. Leave it for the scholars, the scholars how to, how to know how to handle such situations. And of course, we're back to this notion of responsibility yeah. where we are believe the people of uh, Ahl Sunnah Jama'at to be the people of truth and therefore we should be dealing as people confident that we have the truth and caring that we spread the truth. How do we get the people to accept the truth? We spread it in the right way. Thank you very much. That's exactly what we should be doing. B pay great attention to our style in Dawah. 
and we shouldn't go around, la as I said, labeling people, trying to classify people, tell them, oh, you're out of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, you are Mubtada, you are this, you are that. Don't make that your business. Mm -hmm. Make it your business to advise people. Mm -hmm. okay. Tell them what the truth is. Tell them that this is the true faith. Even if they tell you, no, that's not. Tell them, well, this is what I know, and this is what I see the evidence is. So try to hold on to that. Don't try to label them. Now, Sheikh, one of the, 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 the aspects of this, um, the issue of groups here, is many times in the West you find these, these groups appearing and from all sorts of, of different claiming that they're Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah and they're claiming that they're this, that and the other and they are all saying that in, in effect if, even if they don't say it with their own mouths they bring hadith etc to say that you know we are the people who are going to, the, uh, going to Jannah we yes. are the people going to paradise and everybody else is, is wrong you know even to the point where individual masjids uh, in certain areas Individual masjids are saying that we are the people of truth. Yes. Uh, uh, wh wh how should we approach this? Wh what should we do? Well, this is one of the dilemmas that really uh, have, have caused the Muslims so much division, disunity, and even weakness. Uh, and that's the problem when people in the West lack the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Muslim uh, communities in the West obviously lack mm -hmm. the knowledge, they lack the scholars. Mm -hmm. And as one of our great teachers of today, one of the great scholars of this Muslim ummah today, he says when he visited Europe, he said, I saw the Muslims there as orphans. I really had so much pity for them because to me they were just orphans. They didn't have any strong students of knowledge to really run, run the affairs of the deen, mm. run the affairs of the masjid. You find each group or each admin of a masjid, they holding on to one understanding and they're trying just to uh, dismiss all the rest mm. and declare them to be people of innovation, declare them to be outside even the realm of Islam, uh, and we don't work with these people, we don't cooperate mm -hmm. with them, these are people of innovation. I think Dawah in the West or Muslims in the West have to focus on the basics of their religion, mm -hmm. focus on Tawheed, mm -hmm. focus on the love of the Prophet mm -hmm. following the Sunnah of the Prophet and have a kind and soft approach to people because many of these Muslim communities, they've never had the right exposition to knowledge, authentic knowledge. Mm -hmm. If we approach them in the right way, and if we build bridges between masajid mm. and build on, I'm not saying to accept people of innovation. I'm not saying mm. that. Mm. But each situation is different. But generally speaking, we have to extend. We have to reach out mm. to people instead mm. of just keeping to ourselves and giving ourselves labels and names mm. and not spreading the good that we have to others. Try to assess each masjid to which extent you can cooperate with them, you can deal with them, you can reach out to their people and try to share the right understanding with them Absolutely. without trying to get into conflict, mm. labeling and mm. even sometimes they create lies against each other. Some, mm. Sometimes they, uh, you know, they make some o sometimes official complaints about each other to the government mm. or to the authorities. That, that really is damaging but and, and yes. then it's even entering into bringing in the non-believers into a situation between the Muslims which as we're commanded not to do. Yes, definitely. Um, because this is obviously has the reverse effect of what you intend, which is to further weaken and divide. Yes, and it uh, shows people mm. who do this, they lack the understanding, they lack the knowledge. These people are just acting based on their emotion, based on their, uh, bas based on their is mm. extreme understanding or mm. assessment of a situation. Well, so it, can you summarize, the, the, the really, just to highlight to the viewers, the effects of this division, um, so that perhaps the viewers can sort of just summarize the effects really of the division of groups on the on one the of the great effects mm. of division is something mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says in, in Surah uh, Al-Anfal وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبْ رِيحُكُمْ Do not split amongst yourselves oh. because if you do this you will fail and your power will go away تَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبْ رِيحُكُمْ You will fail yourselves and you, 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 you will, your, your power will be blown away. Mm. And this is exactly what we see. Look at the Muslims. The, probably the, the biggest nation in terms of population, the biggest <laughs> uh, one of the biggest religions in terms of population, but yet the weakest among the rest mm. of the nations. Why? Because they are split among themselves. They're, the division has really eaten at the, at the strength of the Muslims and they have become enemies to one another. That's one of the main outcomes, mm. one of the main ramifica ramifications of division. Another result of, <coughs> of these divisions is that bewilderment and confusion. You know, probably as a new Muslim, when you came to Islam, you, I mean, you saw so many groups, so many understandings. Mm -hmm. You thought Islam was one, mm -hmm. but now you're faced with, uh, you know, a countless number of mm -hmm. understandings, division, each claim to be the right path. Okay. And there we have it, the, the effects uh, on, on the ummah, 
uh, of uh, groups, um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us and guide us um, through this Amen. and we hope that uh, the Ummah can unite inshallah. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back for another episode very shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Throughout the whole of history, then the one who was sent as a guide, leading people from darkness to light.